Good morning everyone, it's Tom here again um, and welcome to the second video in my series of building a, a plant project using some of the tools in the AEC collection. So what we're going to cover today is basically creating some PNIDs uh, from the project that we created last week. So in the project manager we have the PNID drawings, the plant drawings, the specs and the, any related files. These are basically hard coded into the system. There is nothing you can do about uh, modifying or changing these uh, folders directly. So these are subfolders inside your plant project as well, wherever you put it, be it on a server or vault, uh, or even on BIM 360 team. So underneath that, we can do basically pretty much anything. So uh, I'm just gonna stick a folder in here and call it, call it area 01. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new drawing. I can also create more subfolders. If I have an existing AutoCAD or an AutoCAD PNID file, I can copy that drawing to this project. If it is an AutoCAD PNID file uh, with the smarts uh, inside it, it will copy the drawing in and uh, re recreate the data from inside that file as well, assuming that there's nothing wrong with it as well. We can rename it, remove it. So removing basically removes it from the project manager, but it won't actually delete the directory off Windows Explorer. So you'll have to go and do that manually. Uh, and looking at any properties, it just gives us a name and which template it is as well. So I'm just gonna use the out of the box template, create my new drawing and call it uh, O1 being an area uh, and call it A1 and Pin ID number 1000. So here's my my pin ID. Uh, by default, we have paper space, model space uh, on our templates. Again, you can change that to work however you want. Now you can see my palettes here are still aligned to the 3D side of things. So if I click down the bottom right hand side on that little gear icon, I can switch over to my PIP uh, pin ID standard. So that resets uh, my workspaces and my palettes back to the PNID standard that I picked for the project. So I usually like to just sort of get in here and, and start placing items. So I'm going to place a cone roof tank in here. So I might just stick it here in this corner and then give it a scale factor that I can type in or just use my mouse. So I'm going to give it a tank number 1000 and put the equipment tag in. Okay, so there we have our tank. Now I can copy that or I can create another one, but I want to copy it because I just want to keep the same size. And you can see the annotation has come up with a question mark on it because we can't have duplicates. So I can go through and reassign the tag and I can click on that button there and go next. So in my project setup, I have it set up as, as triple numbers, but I'm using four. So there we have two tanks. At any point, we can click on the data manager and you can see under the engineering items, we have two tanks and two pieces of annotation, which is exactly what we have in our drawing. Following on from that, uh, I'm going to stick in maybe a couple pumps. So again, I'll call it P1000. And then we might do, let's do another one, exactly the same pump. And again, we just go through and change the tag to P1001. And I don't need to place the tag because it's already there. Now something handy you can do here as well is place the, uh, more of an info tag for each item as well. So I can right click on an object, annotate and look for the vessel info tag. And that means that I can place a little bit more detailed uh, annotation in regards to what that tank is. So I like my tags to be at the top. Again, there's no set standard. It might be personal preference, it might be corporate. Uh, preference, it might be whatever your client wants, but you can place these basically uh, at the top or the bottom of the sheets. So same thing for the pump. 
I'm going to annotate, put a pump info tag on it, and stick that there. Move it up so it's aligned, and then same thing with the pump. So we have our pumps and you can see that some of the data is missing. So to populate something like that uh, for our tank, we have diameter. So it might be 10 meter diameter, uh, capacity, height, width, all that sort of information in there as well. So if we have a look in here, so it's actually the width by the height. So let's put it in as uh, 12 meters wide and 6 meters high. Design pressure, I don't know, again, let's put in something 1000 at 100 degrees. Okay, and you can see here that we have all of that information in there as well. So just skipping forward a little bit, we want to start putting in some pipelines. So on objects like tanks, and this is out of the box, it doesn't have the nozzles, but obviously the, the pipes do. There's a couple ways of doing this. So one way would be to run the line in reverse first. So I know that this tank is going to run to P1000. So I can run it in reverse and you can see it places the nozzle and then I can edit the line and reverse it back again. That's one way of doing it. The other way is right clicking on the object, oops sorry, going to our items under the fittings and we've got the option here for nozzles. So I can stick a flange nozzle on that tank and then it becomes part of the tank obviously and then from that we can run our line okay we can also go through and annotate that so just the tag so it's n1 and this is n1 as well just move this out So again, looking at the data manager, we can see here that we have all of our objects are coming in. So we can maybe start putting in some valves in here as well. So with the valves, they start inheriting the numbers automatically. Okay, so HA102 and 101, and because I haven't set a size or spec or service on this, I can assign information to the, the pin ID. So I'm going to say that it's a six inch line, uh, and then it's actually going to be CS150. Uh, it's just a generic process line. Where is it? P, uh, and I'll call it lum number 1000 and I'll place the tag on it as well. So you can see there it's 150 6 inch carbon steel process 1000 and you can see the valve is taken on that properties as well. So we can do the same for the secondary line. Same, it's a 6 inch CS150 P for process and 1001. Now this is not a spec driven pin ID so this list is purely textual. So you can just type in whatever text you want. If you had this as a spec driven pin ID, then this would follow the, the specs as well. So I'm going to put my annotation in there. And there we have it. So as we continuously progress with this pin ID, you can see that all of this information gets populated. So again, at any point we can see what's happening on the pin IDs, we can report from them straight away. And then subsequently we can go through uh, and uh, model off the, the pin ID, um, the lines that we've done on, on, on the, uh, sorry, we can model inside the plant model, the, the lines that we've drawn on the pin ID. 
So that's kind of it for now. It's short and sweet, but it gives you an idea on, on how to create some of these objects. I'm not going to get into customization and that sort of stuff with the pen IDs. Um, so I'll progress through this for the next couple of weeks and then uh, sometime in, in around two weeks we're going to have a look at uh, creating catalogs and specs and getting ready to start doing some 3D modeling of our plant. Thanks for watching.